Hi guys, so today we are installing the auxiliary tank from Riley Garage to a Who's Corner 701 Enduro. Uh, stay tuned for that. Alright, so the first step for the installation is to remove the seat, the plastic covers here on the side, the heat shield, plastic cover on this side as well. And in order to do that, we have to get rid of the luggage rack that I installed in the last video. So I kind of did things backwards there. But oh well, it's just four screws and it's, uh, and it's gone. So we'll get started on that and I'll get back to you when that's done. So here we are guys. Everything is taken off. You have the front side cover, the side cover in the back and the heat shield for the exhaust. On the other side, side cover is off and even the front cover as well. And I have also unmounted the screws for this cooler here. That is in order to get to that screw here, underneath. That is actually a part of what's holding the tank, or the, sorry, the air box in place. And we're going to be removing the air box, so that's why I did that ahead of time. All right, moving on. Now, in the instructions from Rada Garage, they always recommend you to keep, to do this operation with the tank empty. Mine is not exactly empty. There's a little bit at the bottom. I find it hard to get out. So I'm just gonna have to live with getting some gas on my hands later when we're opening up in the back. But I guess that's life. So moving on to the next step. All right, the next step is to remove the air box. And I'm gonna show you here. This is the air box. You have here in the front. One screw there, one screw there. On the corresponding side, one screw here on the back, and one over here behind that cooler, the one that I already undid in the last, in the last step. So we're gonna undo those four screws, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so those four are undone. Now the next step, I don't know if you can see it, but in here, pretty far in, there's a hose clamp. You need to undo that, that one, it's the one that is holding the air box on the intake, and it's the one closest to the engine, so you release that. After that, you have two hoses, this one here, and there's one at the bottom on the other side, that you also have to release. You use a small screwdriver to use. And then you have, a flange here on the intake which I'm going to show you in a better position later all right so inside here is where the hose clamp is and then in order to get the air box all out from the intake you put a screwdriver like that and you push the flange that goes on top and you bend it like that and it's gonna pop out so let's try and do that all right so we went inside and we pushed the flange off the intake so now we can see the tank is is loose it shows in here it's no longer on the intake but you know it's kind of tight everywhere and I don't know I don't feel like I don't like working with tight spaces like that so I what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo this screw and the other one on the side to open the lid and get the air filter out. That's just going to free a lot more space for the, the whole air box to come out. So I'm going to do that now. Also here at the back, we need to remove the cable for the heat sensor. Also you have these two screws, one here, one at the other side, right there. And they were just blocking my ability to easily remove the whole air box. So I just undid them. I don't know in the instructions. I don't think they do that, but 
I don't, I don't know, I just like it when it's easier. And now you see that there's a hose at the bottom. That you need to undo as well. Impossible with one hand. I'll get back when it's done. All right, so there's a, a hose here at the bottom of the air box. It goes through all the way until here. So I'm just gonna cut that zip tie and remove it from there. Just I have to remember to, to put it back on later. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly how it's stuck inside here, but it feels like it's pretty hard to get it out. So I'm just gonna do it that way. All right. So the air box is out. So the air box is out. You see the two hoses, one there and one there. No wonder why I couldn't pull it out. Just like that. Have these big fittings on the inside. So that's why I couldn't just pull it straight out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move some parts over from this one to the new one. And we're going to start with the heat sensor, right there. We're also going to remove from here, one hose clamp, another hose clamp. Ah, I can't do it with one hand. Alright, so once I finally got that hose clamp out of the way... Now, we're gonna pull this all the way out. We're gonna use that in the new air box as well. Alright, this is the new air box. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install the heat sensor in this one. The holes are already pre-drilled. There you go. Next, we're gonna insert the flange that we took out from the other one. We're gonna do that by squeezing it together like this and putting, pushing it inside. There you go. And then we reinstall. Oh, actually it's gonna be further in than that. There you go. And then put back the hose clamps. For this one it doesn't really matter which way you put it. Now this is easier with a socket instead. Six millimeter socket. Just make sure it's nice and tight there. This one, of course, we leave it off, or at least until it's time to, to install it, we want to make sure that it's easily accessible 
for when we want to tighten it later. The air filter goes on top here. What you do is you undo do these. Oh boy, everything is also everywhere. Other side as well. Push the filter on there. You see, that was not the right way to do it. Flip it over. And it looks a lot better. This whole dome here is supposed to be centered with the rest of the filter. And that's when you see, you realize you made another mistake. You, you don't want this filter to be sucked down or whatever. So this cage actually has to go on the inside. So let's do that. There you go. That's more like it. Pretty soon I've done it wrong in every single way you can. Now that looks good. Washer. And then the screw. Washer. And the screw. And then you tighten it down. And then you're done. You're done to put it back inside the bike. Now getting ready to put the, the, the new air box inside the bike. Remember to put the cable for the heat, shield, heat sensor on. Install the hose clamps like this. In this direction it's going to make it easier for you to access it later when you want to tighten it. Alright. Alright so there's one place where I found the instructions a little bit unclear. Um, in the instructions, uh, Rada says that there's a T here, which kind of makes, well, this is the only way I can make sense of it, is that you attach one hose to the air filter box, into the T, one hose going forward here to the front, and the other hose going down to where the other one from the original air box was, was attached before. Uh, you can't use the hose they supply with the kit for this part because this hose's inner diameter is bigger than the one that they supply with the kit. So I took the one from the old air box, I cut it off a piece, and now it's coming down to this part here and now I'm just going to reattach that because I, I zip tied it so now I'm just going to reattach it with a screw going in here a lot easier with a screwdriver don't you just hate it when you put the screwdriver on the other side and you can you just want to be quick. Alright. Oh come on. What's the problem dear? Putting you guys down a little bit. I'm just gonna do this with two hands. It's just a lot easier. Oh boy. There it is. It's in place now tight and you see the zip tie there so that's the hose going up through here coming up here inside attaching to the T that's where I thought the instructions were a bit unclear 
All right, next step is going to be putting the tank inside. So let's do that. Should be fun. All right, guys, so I have prepared the bike now for receiving the tank. I had to redo some things. Uh, the hose here, uh, well, the only thing I did was I flipped the T so that the hose goes straight through the T and into the airbox. And then the side T part is coming here, making sure that it's out of the way so that the tank can rest on this freshly installed bracket here. You can see the bolts going through here and the tank is going to rest on this bracket. And then I have installed this Velcro strap. The way it sits right now, you can see that the furry side is up, meaning the tank can get inside. And then you can push the Velcro through here and come up on top of the tank and then attach like that. So the tank is going in. Now before you put the tank inside the bike, make sure to attach the fuel, fuel line. Now before you put the, the fuel hose on, there's one step I forgot and that's this reflective foil. It's, a, it's like a heat shield. I cut a hole in it to match this Outlet here, fuel outlet. Oh boy, what did I do that? All right, so I'm just gonna put that on, and then I'm gonna trim it afterwards. Trim the edges. All right, now I'm getting. Now we're gonna push the fuel line through here. It's gonna come out in a good place. If we want to come out, there it is. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Now, sorry for the poor photography here. All right, so now I push the fuel, fuel line down. It's going out through here. Now the tank is going to rest on the frame itself and the bracket in the back, this one. And being held in place by this Velcro strap. Just gonna push it in and I'm gonna show you guys. Oh, you just have to make troubles for me now. Sorry about this. It's uh it's it's coming along. I'm just, I'm just wrenching with one hand is something I need to get used to. Alright. Pushing it up through here. Now you can see the velcro strap goes here, so it doesn't, so it can't slide up, it stays here. Over on this side. And I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. These guys out of the way. So it comes inside of those. Just making sure it doesn't squeeze anything in a bad way. There it is. And there it is, the tank is in place with the Velcro strap. And I don't know if it shows very well here. Yes, it actually does. You can see that, well, if you look at the ignition lock, that's the center. So the tank is a little bit on one side because you have the, the cables and stuff like that going here on the inside. So that's all normal. Now I gotta say, the lid for this fuel tank, this is a solid aluminum piece that they have machined. It's really nice. And a nice touch with the bling here for the breather hose. Very nice. So now this is in place. The next step is to install well, the pieces that are going to feed the tank, well, the rear tank with gas from this tank. So that's what we're doing next. All right, here's the part we're going to undo. We're going to pull that out. And when we do that, there's gonna be a lot of gas gushing out because I didn't follow instructions and empty it out. 
before and I quite frankly don't really know, know how I'm gonna empty it out if I don't run the engine for quite some time so I made this little contraption instead this is just basically a plastic sheet and runs down into a perfectly clean container and my idea is that this will gather the gasoline that pours out well, we'll see how that goes. I think the idea is pretty good. Alright, okay, so that's the fuel pump in there. And that is covered by this. Sticks inside of that. Alright, so the next step now is to take this part supplied in the kit. And you put it on a plastic part. You see that's the plastic part. And you see where this where this part comes in is where the where fuel is going to go in. So what you do is you you oh boy this you unscrew this, you take it off, you make a mark with a drill or something pointy on the plastic part where to drill and then you drill a hole eight millimeters so that's where the fuel is going to come from the extra tank going into the fuel pump and then you put everything back together like that big o-ring going into that track here here And then you stick the fuel pump inside here until it clips. You see there's those tongues here. They are supposed to clip in those small holes here where my thumb is. And, and then you shove everything up in that hole. And you put back or you put the screws supplied with the kit. They are longer than the OEM screws. And then you tighten it up. Now when you tighten it up. Don't over tighten it. You have to have you have to make it tight. But if you make it too tight, you destroy the threads and you're gonna have a fuel leak no matter what you do. So be careful. Good luck with that. I'm gonna get to it. Alright, so another thing that's a little bit unclear. This old part or an OEM part that was here over the ignition like that. Uh, well, it doesn't fit anymore, right? So you got two choices. Either you make a hole in this one, but you're supposed to be using the one that they supply with the kit. Like that. With two screws. Well, no one ever no one tells you about this in the instructions. So just take care for this. What you basically what you need to do is you need to remove these rubber grommets here that the old or the OEM lid is pressed into to stay in place and you need to put oh, let me see old person bending hold on all right so then you need to put these guys instead over the holes and you screw them in and from what I can tell these guys are supposed to be on top so the screws go in through there now the screws supplied with this i don't know what i have left is not exactly these are the stuff that are, that are left i'm sure they were supposed to be somewhere in the installation but i didn't get it so these two are different so i'm just going to use a different set of screws that I have from before and I'm pretty sure that's gonna cut it until I get better clarity in what I was supposed to be doing okay guys so this is what it looks like installed and ready we can't really see it notice anything until you move up close that's where you have the gas cap the filler cap the two screws that I mentioned before this one is a little bit loose because, well, 
the one supplied with the kit was not correct. So I have to, I have to actually fix that one. And then you have, well, if you move over to this side, <clears throat> this is where the fuel line comes down. And that's where you have the controller, whatever you want to call it, the valve goes back here and into that console here, the one that we installed. And it's full of gas right now, so it's not leaking or anything. Well, I mean, yeah. Shut it off. Turn it back on. That basically just controls the flow from the from the extra, the auxiliary tank. The regular OEM tank is inside here, so it's gonna always be open. Guys, thank you so much for one more day of wrenching together with me. I hope this was clear. It's not very easy to show all the steps, but if you have any questions, feel free just to ask them in the comment section below. And also please refer to the instruction video that Rada Garage have on their website. Uh, it's pretty good. There are some moments there that are pretty unclear, but I think I managed to, to figure it out. So I showed you guys instead in my video. So anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe. Hit the bell button and like and comment and all of that stuff so you help me going with this and um, I'll see you in the next video.